Hello, mother. Hello, father. Here I am at Camp Granada. Camp is very entertaining. entertaining. And, and they, they say, say that we'll, we'll go out it when comes. it stops raining. <laughs> Hello there. And how are you today? Oh, I am so glad to hear that. <laughs> and me? Oh, I'm still alive and kicking. Well, still alive anyway. So would you accept one out of two? <laughs> and what's the weather like here in South Yorkshire? Well, as you just heard, it is raining. And the temperature outside is only 14 degrees. That's 57 in Fahrenheit. Now, I just spoke with Father Ludovic over in Verona, Italy. He's on the coast of the Adriatic right now with his family. And they have, are you ready for this? 28 degrees and lots of sunshine on a blue sky on golden beaches. <laughs> That's 82 degrees Fahrenheit, by the way. Much better weather, of course, than what we have. But then again, they don't have fish and chips or Yorkshire pudding. <laughs> so where are we off to today? Well, Mr. Adi Nugroho wrote me a very interesting note. He referred to a flight posted on YouTube that I made a few weeks ago, the one between Colombo VCBI and Bangalore VOBL. Let me read it to you. Your flight to India reminds me to a friend of mine, an Indian, who works at an aircraft manufacturer. We had a discussion regarding Paro Airport, VQPR, that only super good pilots could land over there. In fact, there are less than a dozen pilots certified to land the A320 on Paro, as far as I know and all of them are drug air pilots. The landing procedures are also very difficult. Pilots have to follow a visual path between mountains. There are some direct routes to Paro, including flights from Kathmandu with magnificent views of the Himalayas. I'm not asking you to do this route, Father Dane but it's worth the try in case you need a very challenging flight route. Oh. <laughs> well, how could I not rise to such a challenge? Now, I've seen lots of videos about Paro in Bhutan, so this would be a nice challenge for an old, bold pilot such as myself. And in doing some research, I learned that Druk Air is the corporate name for Royal Bhutan Airlines and that's the flag carrier for the Kingdom of Bhutan and their headquarters in the Western District of Paro. Now here's some real life footage of an actual flight. These are the Himalayas and look there, there's Everest. My goodness me, look at that view. I think you'll agree that the views are spectacular. Let's hope our weather will be kind to us to allow us such views en route. Now, the distance between Kathmandu and Paro is about 250 nautical miles. Bhutan Airlines Flight 772, that's B3-772, makes the run regularly between these two points. The flight route is very straightforward. Here it is on the screen. VNKT, that should point of origin, that's Kathmandu. Then KIMTI, then taking the Gulf 348 
to subsu, S-U-B-S-U, and then in whatever star to VQPR paro. All you need do is add the departure and arrival runways, the SID and the star. Easy peasy. <laughs> now I've got two excellent airport sceneries for the flight today. Kathmandu VNKT scenery is by Thai Creation and was made for FSX, but I managed to get it to work in P3D. And the VQPR scenery for Paro is made by FSDG. And both are very detailed and colorful sceneries that really do add to this realism. Now, Paro Airport is nestled in a valley surrounded by the highest mountains in the world. As I said, Everest is only a bit over 100 miles away. The airport elevation is 7,364 feet above sea level, and there's only one runway, 7,431 feet long. Surrounded by deep valleys and 18,000 plus peaks, makes Paro one of the world's most difficult airports for takeoffs and landings. Now, I've had quite a bit of experience flying cargo planes among mountains and valleys using only geographic and topographic landmarks for navigation. But a 737-800 is much larger and more complex than anything I've ever flown. A jet handles differently to a propeller-driven aircraft. Now, I would have no trouble flying a C-47 around those mountains, passes, and valleys, nor would it be a problem to land a C-47 on a 7,000-foot paved runway at Paro. But a 737 is a lot different. It has a much faster landing speed, and the weight oh, is considerably more than an old Dakota. I have a commercial pilot's license with IFR, but I'm rated only for propeller aircraft like, well, like the C-47, not jets. Now, according to what I could find out, 737s are not flown regularly into Pyro. Only the smaller and slightly slower A319s and A320s fly in and out of Pyro. But can it be done? Hmm, hmm. Well, of course it can, of course. I checked and learned that in February 2003, a Boeing 737-700 successfully completed 11 test flights at Paro International Airport. So the myth that only an Airbus can fly in and out of Paro is nonsense. <laughs> But I know, I know what you're asking. The real question is this. Can I fly it? And more specifically, can Ryanair 186 go where only Airbuses have gone before? <laughs> well, let's find out, shall we? It's time to go into the pre-flight room and check things out. So, thank you, Mr. Nugroho, for your excellent suggestion. I do hope the flight today will please you and meet your expectations. <laughs> See you in the flight preparation room. Now here is the latest airlines flight 772, that's B3772 by Butan Airlines to make the flight. This was done on Monday. Took off from Kathmandu and it looks like, looking at this particular curve, that it was taking off on runway 20. Nothing here on the destination to show what runway was used. But we can see here that the altitude of the flight was 35,000 feet whether we will be given the same when we do our sim brief is another matter, but we can check. 
Now the actual distance according to this was 236 nautical miles. Let's have a look at Windy. Now here's Windy.com for Kathmandu. You can see <laughs> it's in the Himalayas at this particular point. The winds are 130 degrees at three knots. Visibility is 8,000 meters. Clouds few at 15,000 feet. Scattered th at 3,000. Broken at 10,000. Temperature 24 degrees. Dew point 20 degrees. Q and H 1014, which is not bad. Very close to standard. But look at this. MVFR, minimums for VFR. So, in all likelihood, we may have to make an IFR departure. And if the wind is from 130, well, in that case, 130, we could very well then be taking off on runway 2 or runway 20 depends on which one is assigned because it is variable we're not really sure which runway is going to be the one now looking at paro the one thing that we do have here and here's paro nestled really in the mountains is this was two hours and three minutes ago, so it's already obsolete. The wind is 330 degrees at six knots, visibility 10 kilometers or more. Clouds few at 4,000 feet, broken 7,000. Oh, 20 degrees and 15 degrees. Dew point Q&H 1021, higher. It's a higher pressure there than it is in Kathmandu. The... It says it's VFR. Now, if this is the wind that is coming in, 330, then guess what? Then that is blowing straight down the runway here. So as we come in, we'll be coming in on runway 33 and using the Subsu 1 approach. So let's go into SimBrief and see what we can make out of our flight. Remember, we already know what route we're going to be putting in. So we are airline Ryanair. We are flight 186. We're going to depart from BNKT. And we're going to go to BQPR. The alternate that is given to us is VGEG. And there's our airframe. We are profile six. It says schedule flight time is one hour, 15 minutes. Departure runway is two on this particular date. We are full of passengers. We are one ton of cargo and it's all champagne and caviar. So should we have the misfortune to come down in the Himalayas, we will not be suffering the problems of that ill-fated flight that came down in the Andes some 30 odd years ago. You remember? That was the one that had all the footballers on it and they ended up cannibalizing each other. We won't be doing that. We'll be living on champagne and caviar while we await our rescue in the Himalayas, <laughs> if we're lucky. And here, here is our route. It is valid. It says the route distance is 253 nautical miles. So it's accepting that route. And there is, there is the route. And here is the approach. Right here is PR888. Very important because that is the point of which we will make our run into Paro. 
we're going to customize our alternate and we're going to go to VQGP will be our alternate. So we'll analyze this route. It says 65 nautical miles away and there it is. So we've got a slightly closer route. Why are we going to do this? Because that way we will require less fuel for the overall journey. So up here, you can see that the alternate has changed to reflect the new alternate airport. So there's our route. There's what we want. This is the plan. So we will save this and then we'll generate the flight plan. Let's see what it gives us for departures and whether or not we're going to be flying in on 3-3 like we want. Well, here's the first surprise. We've got flight level 310. Airtime is 48 minutes. There's the block fuel, 5506. But there is our route and it says this is the planned optimum flight level. So we'll have to accept that. There's the route. So looking down here, here's where it's got the flight altitude for us, the cruise altitude 310. Um, right here is Ryanair 186. Here's the average wind that we'll need to put in. Down here is the amount of block fuel we need to load. And right here is the reserves and the trip and taxi that we will need to calculate. VN VNKT02 using the Igris 1 Bravo to Kemti, taking the Golf 348 to Subsu, and then the Subsu 1 approach onto 33. Now let's have a look down here. And here, these are the winds aloft and their speed. So we will also need to have that. But let's have a look at the weather charts, shall we? Now, here we go, just having a look down here. There is weather to the south, but it looks like it's not going to be affecting us. The winds aloft, well, we are definitely going to have a headwind until we get down to here, and then it will be a crosswind going into the valleys. And that's about the same at our altitude that we will be flying. This is for flight level 300. We'll be at 310. And here is our flight profile. Starting out from here, VNKT, quite high. It's almost, um, it's about 4,000, 5,000 feet up. Climbing up to here, the top of climb, there's Tumbley. There's the top of descent. Here's Subsu. And here is PR888, which we're going to talk about in just a minute. As it descends then into VQPR. And look at all of these high mountains around us. So we're going to be landing in that. All right, we have our flight plan. So let's go on in to Navigraph charts here and let's make ourselves a new flight and we'll make it from SimBrief using the latest one that we just did. Now we need to open the charts list. We need to have uh, airport information. We need the stands and coordinates and we need to have the Igris one also. Here's the Igris. Here you can see what the difference is between the Igris 1A and 1B. I'll just clear this so that you can see this a lot clearer. If we're departing on runway two, we take off two here, and then we make ourselves a sweep around, 
right over the top of Kathmandu VOR and straight out to Igris and then down this route Kemti and on. If it's the other one, if it's the 1A, then that means we are taking off in this direction on runway 20 and here you can see the route takes us around like this and then brings us onto the same path going towards Paro. Now as for parking stands, we are going to be at stand 5 right here in front of the International Terminal. In case you remember the flight that we made just recently going into Kathmandu, we actually parked at Paro Stand 5, so we'll pick it up from where we left off. And going into our destination, we'll open the charts list. We're going to need the airport information. We're going to use the RNAV X-ray runway 33 approach. So we'll be coming in right along in here. And the star that we'll be using is this one, of course. It's just to go from Subsu over to here to the PR888. And that has some restrictions and limitations, so we will have to look at that very closely. Right, now for our arrivals, uh, departures, we are planned to leave on runway two. And for the approach arrivals, we will be coming in on Subsu 1. And the approach will be the RNAV X-ray PR888. So now you can see the route has filled itself in and these are the valleys that we will be following. Look at that. Let's have a look at the overlay for our approach. We'll be coming in subsu, then we have to descend and meet the regulations for PR888 and then we follow this valley all the way around. And looking at the map a little bit closer, at PR888, that's the initial approach fix, we have to be 17,000 feet and max speed of 185 knots. And here's the route and the distances between the fixes. At PR740, we have to be at 1,440. 1440 feet. At PR 738, we need to be down to 13600. PR 736, down to 13100. Until we get to the intermediate fix, we need to be down to 12,400 feet. The gear should be down and I should have flaps 25 set. And then at PR712, which is right here, this is the final approach point. We must be at a mandatory 11,800 feet and the speed can be no faster than 145 knots or we're not going to be able to make the turns in the valley or we'll end up overshooting the end of the runways. a minimum speed to keep it in the air but the air at this altitude is thin and so it'll be a balancing act maintaining speed and descent too slow and I can stall and crash <laughs> and too fast and I'll end up as wreckage on the side of the mountain ha huh. well now you know why I give all of that free champagne away I want everybody drunk on this flight <laughs> And then, if all is well, 
when we get to PR708, I should have the runway in sight. And then, if I can, then I will, of course, disengage the autopilot, take control and land it with full flaps. But if I can't because of weather or other conditions, then I shall have to make a missed approach and go round and either try it again or on here, I would go around and just simply leave at this point and go to my alternate. So that will be the choice that I will have. Now, if you notice, the route takes us over this little bump right here. Now, that little bump, you'll see that on many a video on YouTube of real flights done by Drucker going in. And if you listen, you'll hear the call outs. It'll say 500 feet, 500 feet, just before and just after. And then they, of course, descend from 500 feet all the way down to here. Now, that's a very short distance in which to drop 500 feet. But that's that's what we will have to do. And speaking of call outs, I'm going to have to switch the GPWS system off. That's the ground proximity warning system. Otherwise, I'm going to go deaf with all those terrain, terrain warnings. Now, I'll show you that when we're in the cockpit. I've not had occasion to actually try that switch. So uh, this will be the first time I'll be doing it. And I'm not sure if it's going to work, but we shall have to see. So there's our route. There's our flight plan. Are you happy? <laughs> Okay, well, in that case, then let's go into the cockpit and set it up, shall we? Ah, oh, there you are, Mr. Negroho. Do come in, please. Take a seat. And welcome to Ryanair 186. As you can see, we are here at Kathmandu and we are at stand number five. I have made one change. We, I have disengaged Active Sky because Active Sky was um, the real live weather at this particular time is so cloudy and misty and everything that there really would not be anything to see outside. And it also showed that it was iffy about going in and out of Paro. So rather than risk that, I've set the weather to the internal P3D scenario of cold weather. Which means cold fronts are coming in from the east and from the west. That's the description. But it should show that we have some good cloud, but also some exceptionally clear visibility to actually see the Himalayas when we cross. So... Having said all of that, we're here to make that epic flight. So I've got everything checked, washed all the windows, kicked all the tires, made sure that the fuel is on board, and most importantly, made sure there's enough bubbly and caviar in the main cabin to keep everyone drunk and not looking out of the windows as we fly close to those mountains. <laughs> Don't want to frighten them, now do we? So, if you'll take your seat, buckle up, and let's, let's start the system. So, battery on first. We have some voltage. So we have enough to be able to put the fuel pumps on. And now we're going to start the APU. The auxiliary power unit, of course, is located in the tail of the aircraft. Now, you being familiar with aircraft manufacture, you will know about that. Actually, the scenery around here is very, very good. This is a delightful airport scenery, and considering that it was built for FSX, but I managed to get it to work in P3D, I think is pretty darn good. Pretty darn good. 
This, of course, is scenery by Thai Creations. Thai Creations made all of this. Now the forward service hatch is open and the equipment light is on, meaning that the stairs are extended down for the passengers to come on and they will be loading in just a moment. Ah, there, there is the um, light and now I've switched it on to the power coming from the APU. So the next thing I want to do is turn on the IRS, which is like a sat-nav, and it locates our GPS location. Turn on the galley, just in case someone wants to make us a cup of tea. The emergency exit lights, these are those lights that go down the center of the aisle and also illuminate where the emergency exits are. No smoking. Bars and seat belts, attendants, if anybody's listening, yeah, we could use two cups of tea. What do you think? You like a cup of tea? Well, let's see if someone comes. Over here, I'm turning on the window heat because it's likely to be cold. The probe heat, yes, at this altitude and location, it's good to get the probes nicely warm. The electrical hydraulic pumps. Now we'll turn on the APU bleed and turn on the packs to get the heat going into the main cabin. Now you can hear that rush of air going through the, the nozzles as they come in. And we'll turn on the steady light. That way the ground people know that we're in here and starting our procedures. So now it's time to go on in and program the FMC. So the first thing we need to do is press the position in it and then we put in our location which is VNKT. So VN and KT. We are at stand 5 so we'll put that in. Let's see if it works out. I'm going to check with Navigraph charts and see whether or not that stand is correct. According to the coordinates, we should be 27420, 27420 and 85, 81, 5. 5, that is correct. So we'll put that in and now we are located. Next we want to put in is our route. So once again we put in BNKT. We put in our destination which is BQPR. We put in our flight number which is Ryanair 186. Go page down, and now we put in the flight plan exactly as we got it. And it goes to, first of all, to Kimti. So K I M T I. Then we take the Golf 348. So Golf 348. And go direct then to Subsu. So SUB SU and activate that. Then we go to departures and here we need to listen to the ATIS and we'll tune to ATIS on 127.0. So 127.0. Tribunan International Airport Information for Part 0651 Zulu Wind 301 at 25 Visibility greater than 20 miles Sky condition few clouds at zero Temperature 3 G.2 Altimeter minor 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 Landing and departing runway 2 BFR aircraft say direction of flight All aircraft read back all short instructions Advise controller on initial contact you have Papa Well we have Papa And it says 
We are leaving on runway 2, which means we'll be using the Ingrid 1 Bravo. And we'll be going to Kimti, is our transition. So execute that. Our arrival is Arnav X-Ray 33. And we'll be coming in on the Subsu 1 and we'll be using the PR888 transition. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to go into the legs and we need to check that our route is good and if there are any discontinuities then we need to correct them. So we'll go through the, these steps So far, so good. All the way. And swinging around and coming up onto our final fix. And there it is. Now, I'll do that again, but this time I'm going to show you on the other screen what it actually looks like when we make this procedure. All right, now I'm starting to do the steps and what we'll do is it will go through each of the steps in turn. So there's all the steps. One by one, we go through them and there is Subsu and there is the critical one, that's the uh, initial approach fix and then here are all of the other fixes as it goes into that big curve going down the valleys all the way in to the runway right here and then this little line indicates the missed approach should things turn them Pear shaped. Ha. A Ryanair 186? Never. <laughs> right, I'm going to switch back to map. And now I'm going to turn on the weather, put the other information in on that. Turn on the flight continuity. So we need to have a fix there, and that is VQPR. VQPR. We need the 4 mile radius, we need the 10 mile radius, and we need the 30 mile radius. Now ordinarily, I would go into the forecast and put in the descent, but since we're using a different weather scenario, those figures are not going to work. But I can put in the transition level, which is 180. Now we'll go on to the route, perform the initialization. 2,284 kilograms of fuel in reserve. The trip and taxi should take 2,511. That comes to 4,795 or 4.8 to round it out. So 4.8. Our Reserves are 2,284, so that's closer to 2.3. So we'll put 2.3 in for reserves. Double click the zero fuel weight to allow the onboard computer to make its calculations. We're cost index 6. We'll be flying at 310. But I will put in 180 for our transition altitude and execute that. I'm going to put in three degrees to accept that. Takeoff will be 10 degrees. Double click this to allow the calculation and it says that our center of gravity is 23.7. Trim on the trim wheel is 4.78. And then these are the V1, rotate and V2 speeds. So now I'll put those 
in on our MCP. So 144. And we're going to be flying at 31,000 feet. And I'm going to put 31,000 feet in up here. Our landing altitude, 7,364. So that's 7,350. That would work that. So spin this up to 7,350. Pretty high, pretty high, but we don't want anybody's ears to be popping when we open the door in Paro. All right. Now the next thing I'm going to need to put in, of course, is going to be our departure, and that is 022. That's the course that we'll be flying to depart. So 022. and over here as well put these switches up and press those we have two green lights which tells us that we have a good flight plan arm the auto throttle and now we are set we are set to go our passengers have boarded we call them self-loading cargo you know so they are now climbing on they're finishing getting themselves settled in so I'm going to bring up the stairs close the door <coughs> and in a moment we're going to ask the nice people on the ground to give us a pushback so that we can start our engines but before we do that we need to ask them to ask ground control to give us a departure going to the east Kathmandu ground Ryanair 186 request taxi for east departure with Quebec Ryanair 186 taxi to an old short of runway 2 using taxiway golf 5 runway 2 contact tower on 118.1 when ready Taxi, hold short, runway 2, using taxiway, golf 5, runway 2, Ryanair 186. Well, we have our clearance, so let's go ahead and turn on the TCAS, and we'll go in here and ask for pushback. We're going to go and push back. We want our nose to the left. And we want to go 90 degrees. Select the tug and see what we get. Right, break the ground. Go ahead. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our right. Copy that, ready to push. Tail to the right. Parking brakes released, please. Parking brakes are released. Switching to RTO. Brakes released. And we'll start engine number one today. So I'm going to turn off the left and the right air conditioning packs or heat packs in this case. I'm going to turn on the anti-collision lights. And now I'm going to switch this and this to generator one. And this of course is the start switch. The start valve has opened. It's starting to spin up. We're getting a good spin. In a moment, it gets to 24. I'll introduce the fuel. There's 24. Now we'll see if we can get a good ignition. Looking at the engine gas temperature, it's starting to heat up. It's looking good. Next thing we'll need to see is the low oil pressure light go out, which it just did. And in a moment, we should hear the engine start. There. There you can hear the engines. 
Now we'll switch to engine number two. We've got 115 volts on that. So we'll now look for engine number two. Start valve has opened. The spin has started. We're climbing nicely. We get to 24, then we will bring in the fuel. Push back complete. Parking brake is on and fuel Brick has set. been introduced. We're going to go to flaps 10. The steering pin is pulled. Watch for the slip release from that center right now. Good flight. Thank you very much. And now we're looking for the engines to ignite. We're looking for 115 volts up here. The low oil pressure light has gone out, showing that we've got a good system. 115 there. Now we'll switch that off. Turn on the air conditioning packs again. Turn on the main engines for our electrical. Turn off the APU and turn off the APU here. Now we're running strictly on electricity generated by the main engines. So I've turned on the taxi lights and we're going to go down here and turn to intercept the main runway where we will do a backtrack to turn around. So everything is clear, let's make sure. All right, seatbelt signs are on check, door lights check, MCP check, takeoff thrust check, 3D flight, my brother, air takes it about three, anti collision light is on, generators are on check, probe heat on, anti ice is not needed at the moment, isolation valves just check, engine start levers, idle detent, right deck door closed and locked, recall. Flight controls check, flaps, we have green lights. Stabilizer trims, correct. Auto breakdown is RTO, speed brake lever down, detent, ground equipment is clear, so we are ready to taxi. So, brake off, a little power to get ourselves unstuck. And here we go. Got some lovely views of the mountains around Kathmandu. Well, I hope that you're comfortable there, Mr. Nugroho. the detail in the scenery here really is delightful Thai Creations did a very very nice job with this right we go down here a little bit more and then we turn to intercept the runway we swing around we're going to request takeoff clearance because we will be going on to an active runway and we don't want to interfere with anything that's happening like aircraft coming in to land or something that would be embarrassing but everything is looking sharp crisp and clear so I hope that means we'll be able to see the 
Himalayas and even Mount Everest as we're going past it. So I'll request takeoff. Kathmandu Tower, Ryanair 186, ready for east departure at runway 2. Ryanair 186, cleared for takeoff, runway 2. Approved, departure to the east. Cleared for takeoff, runway 2, Ryanair 186. Alright, we've been given our clearance, but we will look right, look left, make sure everything is clear before we move on to the active runway. We'll go down here, there is a turnaround space and we'll turn around in that. Now I'm going to turn on all the lights. I'm going to also go into the anti-collision lights. I'm going into continuous crew secure for takeoff. another check making sure that there's no aircraft approaching and we'll swing around here and line ourselves up on the center line okay last check everything is looking good lights check ground all right, we are ready, starting the clock, advance power to N1, and we are good, push the toga button, and now we are rolling. Rotate, V1, rotate, V2, 
to the left. And we're making our turn. Right, crew is released to go to work.
land at Paro, along with all of those airbuses. Okay? See you in a little bit.
which is the PR888. We are now descending and the hills are getting closer. Ha! I suppose they are. I've turned on the terrain inhibitor switch and you can see it here on the screen it says terrain inhibit so we won't get that terrain terrain message. I've also got the lights on and I've now just turned on the engines continuous because we're moving into some interesting area here and we certainly don't want to lose our engines at this particular point. But so far, we are on course.
we're starting our run into the valley.
we're on our final descent. I have control. And this is the steep descent. stand right in front of us. going down, seatbelt signs are turned off, right starting the clean up and turning off all of that, lights are off, TCAS is now off good everything is done fuel is off and battery is off. Shutdown is complete. Well Mr. Negroho, it was a bit of a bump on the landing and that's that was to be expected given the fact that we were slightly below what Boeing would like the landing speed to be. So we came in just a little bit heavy and remember we are full. We have full complement of passengers so we were at maximum weight for that particular con um, aspect. But we flared out, we did land and we're here. So, Ryanair 186 can land where only Airbuses have gone before. <laughs> Thank you for the challenge and for that wonderful information that you gave about the number of pilots that are actually certified to land here. I found that very interesting. But Paro is definitely a very interesting scenery. And by the way, this scenery is by FSDG. And it is a delightful look at the intricacy of the detail directly in front of us. I mean, this is really quite stunning, this scenery. Definitely well worth the money. 
and there's all of the drug air vehicles directly in front of us, but none of them, fortunately, are wanting to use us for target practice. There it is. Beautiful scenery. And the detail of that terminal building is just ex exquisite. So thank you, sir. And with the best of wishes to you and to all of the rest of you as well. And I'll see you again on Ryanair 186.